Nancy O'Connell. Um, I served in the Peace Corps in Suriname, South America from 2003 to 2005. Um, I think what made my work worthwhile was just one incident where uh, I visited the sick. I had my own badge to visit in the hospital. Went to see this young man with AIDS, and they're often ostracized by their families. People don't want them at home. They send children away to orphanages and so on and so forth. So what part of our mission at Stick Dean Mamio was to visit the sick in the hospital. So I went to see this young man frequently, and then I was heading home to... Uh, my hometown of South Hadley, Mass, to uh, be a part of the U.S. Women's Open, a volunteer. I was gone two and a half weeks. I came back to Suriname and went to my agency, and they said, Nancy Alfred is asking for you. So I went to the hospital to visit with him, and he died the next day. And uh, so if you think your work isn't worthwhile, it really is. You're doing some good somewhere all the time and you're an American doing your best, and that's my story. My name is Adam Limehouse, and I was in Suriname, South America from 2008 to 2010. So it, it is the custom where I lived, on the river I lived, for the captains of the village, the village leaders, not to speak directly to outsiders. And with the more traditional captains, this is a hard and fast rule. And so for months, in fact, for year, for the first year I was at service, they would never talk to me. I would have to talk through their, their caller, their, you know, their talking man. And after I was there for about a year, all three captains from my villages you know, started talking to me more and more and more and trying to get me to do stuff for the villages more and more and more and more. And finally, on a, a visit that I knew about but had not brokered, I get this little kid, you know, all of four, show up at my door one afternoon while I'm casually reading a book, minding my own business, and say, you know, the captain needs you right now. And I'm thinking, oh crap, what's, what's happened now? You know, what did I forget to do this time? As it turns out, the meeting that I had known generally about had come early, and his caller was off on, in his ground, in his garden, and couldn't be found, could not be gotten to. And he had me sit down and do it for him. So I, were, I you know, sat there and translated from the local language into English and back again as you know, the captain just insisted that he would not talk to these you know, outsiders. He, was, he wasn't going to talk to them. But here I am, you know, dressed in you know, polo and jeans, talking for him as a clear outsider. And the people I was talking to were all, you know, black, like him. So I was the insider. I, I was the village insider, and they were the outsiders. So that was the cooler thing that was my experience.